We are talking about uh, Info360 Plan. It's kind of a, an evolution of our AI uh, technology, Imagine, uh, combined with Insight, uh, really just for everything inside the fence, uh, whether it has to do with water or wastewater treatment processes, uh, being able to aggregate all that data, uh, and then also um, eventually being able to leverage it with the AI and machine learning optimization aspects of things. Um, so again, what is Info360 plan? So like I mentioned, everything really inside the plant, really just the data visualization, being able to uh, aggregate all those SCADA sensors and being able to put them in one uh, central location. Uh, and really the idea is just to monitor uh, everything that's going on in the system and, and then be able to optimize it. The other nice feature is being able to uh, leverage that data for uh, running through calculations and to uh, put together reports, uh, things like DMRs um, and, and regulatory things that need to be put together uh, every month. Uh, so just a kind of a quick overlook at just all the things that can be done uh, with Info360. Um, it is a platform that is able to, uh, again, aggregate all those different sensors and things like that uh, from uh, from what's going on inside of the plant, uh, being able to track uh, that information uh, and look at the performance over time. So again, being able to put together uh, different reports and things like that. Uh, the other nice thing is is uh, really the the training and knowledge retention of things. As uh, people retire, things get lost, things get um, mixed up between um, you know people, and then being able to uh, use that in a way uh, to um, educate. Um, um, gosh, I'm having trouble with words today. Uh, educate the uh, the staff and the new staff that's being brought in, and being able to uh, retain some of that information, and then and also just being able to get uh, incident management, being able to set up custom alerts, and being able to track where things are going, and um, have it viewable by really everyone in the organization rather than um, just a few handful of people. Um, so some of the reasons we've uh, put together in Food 360 plan, just seeing some of the things out there that uh, people are interested, uh, being able to reduce the the processes and workflow complexities and, and really being able to improve the plant operations and level of service going on. Uh, and then again, automatically tracking that data and then generating those compliance reports rather than spending um, you know hours of time having to put those together every single month. Um, so just taking a look at reducing uh, processes and workflow complexities. Um, so the the challenges that we've seen in the workspace is just being able to have a central location for um, all the data, and especially when you have multiple stakeholders and being able to uh, put together uh, all that data, uh, being able to put it in together in a format where um, all the stakeholders have some involvement um, and they might not need to see all of it. Um, so that's where the advantage of uh, Info360 Plant comes into play, where you can set up um, different types of dashboards depending on the uh, different uh, people working on it, uh, being able to see things that you want to see and not other things that you don't want to see, uh, being able to connect to those um, SCADAs and spreadsheets and, and being able to really just have it all in one uh, location. Uh, as you can see here, uh, just like our other Info360 uh, products, uh, it is a SaaS based platform. So it runs uh, on the cloud, accessible by any kind of browser. Uh, and again, just being the idea, having all of that data being aggregated into one space uh, and being able to view it in, in a um, very intelligent way. Um, so generally, uh, we tried to make it as easy as possible to use. Um, pretty uh, simple to put together different reference charts and um, you know, look at the history and things like that. Uh, and then different environments can be set up for uh, whether it's an operator, whether it's the engineers, whether it's consultants, uh, being able to view that data um, and, and only the data that they really need to. So improving plant operations and levels of service. Uh, so this is the idea of being able to track uh, those different performance metrics, uh, being able to look at what's happening over time, uh, and, and then also being able to test out different kinds of scenarios to uh, ultimately come up with an optimized plan. Um, so that's where some of the AI and machine learning stuff comes in to be able to uh, enhance those uh, types of processes and really just understand uh, what's going on in the system and how it can be improved. Uh, the ultimate goal here is really just to uh, reduce the, the risk associated with operating these plants and then improving those level of services and being able to uh, monitor things um, 
uh, efficiently and um, appropriately. Um, so it is a process of being able to bring in all of your current data. Uh, it is your system uh, bringing in the process flow diagrams, uh, building in KPIs uh, with those custom analytics and being able to increase the level of service um, by doing that, um, really having a unified uh, look at all of the uh, information uh, really just gives a, a nice handoff between the operators who are, um, you know, in the weeds a little bit more uh, versus those who are just stakeholders, managers uh, that really just want to see things uh, more at a glance. Uh, so, again, pretty easy to put in together these process diagrams, put in uh, information so that you're able to easily define the different aspects of the plant, uh, be able to uh, pull up information associated with the clarifiers, the filtration uh, systems, uh, and very much just a simple point and click uh, types of analysis to put together some of those uh, historic charts as well as uh, different kinds of um, tables and gauges and things like that. Uh, so consistent and efficient reporting. Um, I I will say I've I've gone through uh, a DMR before in the spreadsheet uh, management, uh, and it's a huge pain. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of references between spreadsheets. Uh, lots of calculations and stuff going on. Uh, really, just kind of a cumbersome process to have to put together all that. Um, and so that's where we really see the the. Um, challenges associated with that. Um, and then even beyond that, uh, if you are still using paper records and things like that, uh, that can be really difficult to uh, maintain and uh, look at over time. Um, and by being able to aggregate all those sensors and things like that within Info 360 plant, uh, we're now able to automate those processes. So reducing those needs for the, the spreadsheets and the management associated with that, and then just automating that calculation instead of having to you know, spend hours at a time to uh, put together those, you're, you're assembling them really on the fly. Um, excuse me, so the compliance reports, uh, integrating all that into uh, those direct data feeds, being able to uh, download information uh, straight to things like Excel files or flat files like CSVs, uh, but there's also uh, more uh, workspaces that can be put together as well as uh, uh, common uh, reports and things like that can also be built, um, which I think Hunter will get into that in uh, a little bit when we uh, take a dive into the software itself. Um, and that's that's about it for the uh, the presentation of things. Um, we have one question come in: Does Info 360 have the ability to track equipment, uh, preventive maintenance, action task items in real time? Um, Hunter, do you have a good answer for that? Um, I wouldn't need I would, to double check on that one, but yeah, I mean, at first guess, I, I wouldn't think there would be any kind of like prevent the maintenance um type of like prescriptive analytics or anything like that, but more so just being able to track um, the performance of pumps and things like that and how they deviate from uh, manufacturer specifications, um, doing that in real time. So not necessarily predicting um, the need for preventive maintenance and things like that, but certainly being able to uh, track that information and, and then make you know an engineering judgment to be able to, to make that assessment. Yeah, and then post those, um, if the maintenance actions are taken, you can, of course, see the improvement of that pump in real time, you know, if you do go out there and uh, make some changes, make a replacement or or do some maintenance, you would, as that data feed is continuing to be fed in, you could see the difference between the pre and the post maintenance. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, um, I'm going to stop sharing now and uh, hand it over to Hunter to take a, a deep dive into the software itself and, and show some of those um, things that I was more of a, a high level kind of thing. Um, get, get Hunter to show uh, some more. And, and the joys of, of having uh, so many resources to lean on to, I was able to run that question by one of our um, 
you know, uh, technical folks specifically for Info360 plan. And he mentioned also, this is a really good one that, um, you know, alerts can be used to build those use case specific alarms um, that can notify when they, when maintenance teams and start an incident workflow process. Um, so that could be, could be one way that you could set up those alerting systems if it hits a certain point and let you know that it is um, time for maintenance. Good point. Um, I guess while you're getting things pulled up, Hunter, we did have another question come in um, about, you know, what Info360 is, is it just a visualization tool and how do we integrate with uh, other types of applications? Um, you know, I will say, um, I guess with all of these, we have a, uh, should have a safe harbor statement that we didn't go over, but um, there will be some things that I'll, I'll say that are kind of future looking and um, not necessarily in the product right now, but that is certainly the idea is to integrate with uh, those different uh, applications, uh, CMMS programs and uh, WMS uh, types of things. So uh, that is certainly something that is um, coming, um, but it's not in there right now. Um, but likewise, being able to integrate with hydraulic models and uh, matching up observed to um, model data and things like that. Uh, certainly is coming as well. Um, for the most part, yeah, it is mostly a visualization tool and just tracking things over time, uh, being able to put reports together, being able to set up alerts, uh, like you were mentioning with the kind of a maintenance schedule kind of uh, alert. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, what I would add to that is, um, you know, it is a strong visualization tool um, and, and something Ryan mentioned on, you know, being the goal um, down the line using, uh, you know, AI and machine learning to do uh, forms of um, optimization in the plant, but really the first step before you even get there is being able to take all of your data, consolidate it into uh, into one place. Um, so really that's kind of the first step on the data journey. And then once it's all in one place, yes, the next step is being able to visualize it, being able to look at graphs, being able to check trends, being able to organize your data. Um, the, the third step is really being able to pull out um, KPIs out of your system. And that's something that Info360 Plant also does. Um, so I, I would say that, yes, it is. it does have a very strong uh, visualization component. That's a very important component. But, you know, by adding in the alerting, uh, being able to look at different incidences, as well as being able to pull out KPIs, whether you're looking at water usage, um, maybe for, for a portion of your plant, or if you are trying to look at pump efficiency or, um, you know, custom analytics for chemical usage and chemical volumes and chemical costs. Um, you know, I think that's really where uh, Info360 plant does kind of take a step past just a visualization tool. Um, so, uh, just to just to double check, Ryan, are you guys uh, seeing my screen? Yep. You're okay. Up. Perfect. So, Info360 Plant, when you open it up, it is going to take you to an initial dashboard. Uh, these dashboards are customizable, so you could put things like the logo of your plant, the analytics that you find important. As you can see here, we do have a schematic diagram of this example place uh, plant that we're working working on. I'll dive a little bit deeper into that as we go. Um, this could be a place that you want to put in your plant capacity, uh, plant intake, system demands. Really, this is a place where you would want to set up the initial dashboard so that when someone opens up this this uh, program, the information that is important to them is the first thing that they see on the screen. So with this system schematic, I can actually come in here and I can press on this image and it's going to actually take me to different facilities, different sensors that I would want to pull up within this system schematic. And then I have the ability to add 
uh, one of these, multiple of these into a chart, whether I look at a historical chart, a gauge chart, or a combined chart that kind of compares all of them. So really giving this dynamic view into what is going on within your plan, uh, being able to pull out information and really with just a click of the button, have the ability to get them added to your uh, to these workspaces and be able to pull up that information. Of course, this is aggregated static data that has been previously uploaded. If this was something in a live plant environment, the data would be continually to be uploaded. So really with just some points and clicks, you can really update this and make it, um, make it your own. Um, and and it's, it doesn't take a lot of time to dive deep to be able to create these custom workspaces. If I come into a different facility like the filtration, that's where I can pull up other information as well. When we move we, forward. Oh, yep. I was just going to say we got a, a couple of questions coming in uh, that we might as well answer because it one of them at least relates to what you're showing. Um, are the inputs to fields uh, such as the type and association customizable? So that, that diagram where you had the uh, the items and the P and, uh, P and ID um, schematic, um, I'm th those are customizable, right? Correct. What you would do is you would upload an image and then you would actually go in and do what's called tag the image. And that's where you are actually pulling in what information you want to be shown on there and what can be pulled out of it. And then um, I might need a little more <laughs> information on this other question, but uh, will Info360 create wrong way of dependency on the data instead of understanding the plant processes and how plants are operated? Um, I feel like the answer to that is, is yes. Uh, do, do you understand that a little bit better than I do? So I, I, I wouldn't say the wrong way of dependency on data because I think a lot of this is data that people are already collecting. And I think people, this is making it, you know, more accessible for people so that people can have a wider view. Um, but I think to, you would still need to understand the process and how it operates to um, fully take advantage of the data that you're viewing. Um, yeah. And, and would be my thought. Yeah, and I would think that like some of that could be handled with alerts, uh, just setting up boundaries that would be unrealistic to kind of validate the data as it comes in, but there's no inherent validation to the data. So that would be my, yeah. I'd, I'd definitely be, be interested to get um, the person that sent that in some additional thoughts, what they were thinking, or we can definitely set up a follow up. And so um, the next feature that we will go into um, once these pop up is the mapping feature. And this is where you can uh, view the different facilities on an interactive map. You have the ability to look at sensor types. As you can see here, we have a storage, a storage sensor. So we can pull up the historical chart, give you the ability to look at the most up to data as that's um, as, the, as that's being updated. As we mentioned, um, with this platform, what we are trying to do is allow people to get a view uh, into what's going on in the system. You know, pe some people at the higher level where they just want to see how the sensors are operating, see what sort of information uh, is going on. So they don't even need to really dive uh, deep into the software just to pull out that data, to pull out that constantly updated and most up-to-date information. And the uh, the mapping feature gives you the ability to do that. This is also a place where if you wanted to, you could upload your um, uh, different GIS data as background layers that you would be interested in viewing along with your sensor information and your facility information as well. So just a way to really get a quick a quick dive into the latest information that is going on within your plant. 
Uh, so the facilities is where uh, you would typically manage the different process areas. So if you're looking at a very specific process plan, if you uh, are looking at facilities across maybe a different city or town or anything of that sort. Um, so that's where you could kind of organize the different processes and the different facilities. Um, each utility might have a different naming convention and some of them have standards around how they do assets IDs. Um, you know, for a specific uh, facility. So what this is going to do is it's really going to help you organize that data, really organize those different facility and managing the different process areas to where I can then go into this specific facility. And what it's doing similar to that dashboard, it is creating a workspace that is specifically around that portion of the of your plant. So as you can see here, we have our overall facility map, and then we have a more specific one for the chemical processes. We have the flash tank mixer, other information. This is where you could come in and there would be different portions that were tagged. If I come to this flash mixer, looking at the chemical process, we could then, similar to what we did on the overall dashboard, we could pull out the information that we would want to add if we wanted to add the polymer and the mixing and we wanted to look at a comparison chart, we could go ahead and bring that to the bottom. And that was updated and be able to view that as a comparison. Very similarly, we can customize this workspace to pull out the information for the specific uh, facility process that we are looking at. So it's really looking at a way to organize the different processes, be able to dive a little bit deeper to pull out that information when we take it a step further past just looking at the overall dashboard and the information information when you first open up the open up the tool. Next thing we'll take a look at is really looking at the workspaces. This is rare, really bringing that visualization, the organization of the data, uh, bringing it all into one place really shines. Um, so you have the ability to look at different historical charts, um, which they will let you look at historical events, uh, overlay various time series data. This is where you can really start looking at uh, those trends over time. You can do comparison charts as well, where you're uploading multiple data sources into one area to be able to track it, compare it, and pull out the information you see fit. If you wanted to um, just look at one of these, you can click it and it's going to highlight it. This is also where uh, one of the places where you're going to have the ability to actually download as a CSV. Um, and you can do that for each of the charting types with the pressure gauge components. You can show the current status as well as you can look at the trends over the past 24 hours. What you can also do within this system, um, one of the things we mentioned, which we will look at a little bit deeper, is looking at how you can set up those custom alerts so that you're getting email notifications if the data is starting to skew out of a certain, certain range, which you can also do with these configurable gauges is you can configure the gauge so that you give it a threshold. And if it's operating out of that threshold, this is going to turn red. So just another way to really get that visual representation of what's going on in your system. And then you can also look at different uh, pump performance charting. You can pull up multiple pumps onto one chart. So that's just a little bit of an overview of what you can, uh, what you can do on these workspaces. If you want to add components, you can add all these different charting capabilities, and we're going to go into a workspace that um, really leverages a little bit of the uh, full capabilities of the workspaces. I think this is the one that I want to go into. Um, so you will notice when I open this, it does look similar to what we had uh, tied to the workspace, the customized workspace, but we did add a little bit more information here at the bottom. So if you're looking at transfer pump station analytics, uh, you can upload similar to how we uploaded just the system schematics um, and being able to tag those images. You can also just upload renderings of your of your treatment plan looking at the different runtimes the different charting capabilities 
and the different views like the candlestick view really can help you look at trends and where something is maybe operating outside of what you would expect. As you can see here in the green, uh, the well to what well to and one levels are, are very similar, but as it starts to get out of range, this is a very visual way to seeing that those trends are starting to move in the wrong direction. Um, so just, you know, a couple of different ways that you can look at this information. Of course, if you wanted to look at uh, influent water quality and then and similar to the above, looking at the clarifers and uh, having a schematic as well as a picture of what maybe what it actually looks at in the field. Uh, you could also tag this image with the live sensor as well. So really just trying to um, take all of that information that people are already collecting, because as we have talked to people in the industry, it's really not a lack of data that people have. It's really finding the tools that can take all of that data and bring it into one place so that it is actionable instead of a, a really manual process of trying to filter through this data to pull out information of what is going on within your plant. So we, we did get a question that's kind of related to some of the stuff you've been showing, but uh, is there a 3D indoor view of the sensor is possibly using a BIM or Revit model? Um, there was some uh, 3D, but... Um, yeah, yeah, I guess if you can answer that. <laughs> um, so right now it would be taking a static picture similar to this one of your actual model. Um, I do not believe at this time we have a way to actually upload um, the model. Now, you know, down the line, we, you know, being a part of, of Autodesk, I could definitely see where that could be extremely beneficial. Um, so that's, that's definitely a value add I would like to take back to the developer teams and, and uh, bring that up. Yeah, and just to add to that, I, I, I think there is some of that effort already going into it. Um, and especially as Autodesk continues to develop their uh, kind of digital twin platforms and um, how it will evolve uh, to be in those as well. So um, another question about uh, SCADA data and just the communication between uh, the, this platform and uh, have, have we seen any problems uh, communicating back uh, with the SCADA data and acquiring data from, from the data source? And um, I guess just to, to kick that off is uh, there is a, a small component that's installed uh, locally uh, and that's what's used to be able to push this data out into the cloud. Um, Inevitably, I think there's always going to be issues with SCADA data and uh, things that happen with that. And that's where some of the alerts can come in uh, handy just to set up, um, you know, if a, a sensor flat lines or something like that, then, you know, that there's an issue going on, that something's not coming in right. Um, is there anything else to add to that, Hunter? Yeah, I, I think exactly what, what you mentioned, you know, really... Um as strong of the connection from this is really gonna be as strong as the SCADA data that's being brought in. Um, sensors sometimes go down, they sometimes lag for a little bit. So once you've established that connection, as long as data is coming in, you should you should have no problem bringing, uh, bringing that information in. But of course, if a sensor, like Ryan mentioned, if a sensor goes down or a sensor flat lines, uh, you know, then it's just gonna come in as zero or that connection is, is gonna be broken. Um, but that's that's kind of the the main issue that we would run into. Now, I will say we do have um, some tools like value mapping and being able to uh, edit your data. So if it if a sensor just drops off for one point and then kicks it back on for some reason, the SCADA has a power surge for a little bit of time, uh, you can go in and look at the information and try and manually bring that up as well as using value mapping. If you know that you have a sensor that for some reason that it runs off of a constant value of maybe the head for a pump is three feet off for some reason, you can add that in so that you do have some forms of data manipulation and data cleanup. Um, and, and we typically will connect to, it kind of goes hand in hand with this um, just from, a lot of the security concerns we typically connect to a data historian and not to the actual um, the actual SCADA sensors. 
Um, so if it's something where it goes down for a little bit, but then it goes back and repopulate, you do have the option in the data screen to um, resample and it'll pull in that updated data. That's all I got for questions right now, but. Perfect. And another thing I will add um, while we're while we're kind of having this conversation, uh, you know, on when you are whoops, um, you know, if, when you are creating those system connections, if you do have multiple uh, data historians, multiple data streams, you can set up multiple connections. Um, so that is one of the places where we really are hoping that this can be a place that uh, consolidates a lot of people's data to make it usable. So I always like to point that out. And then, of course, looking at the facilities, this is where you can start really organizing uh, when we were in the facilities page. You can really start organizing the different sensors, the different types, and then adding on, type, on top of that, uh, being able to set up sensor groups so that you can do, you know, general comparisons of, uh, of sensors of the same type as opposed to having to go in and select each individual one and do a comparison so these are just different ways that we're really trying to help people organize you know and consolidate that data and so we've looked at the workspaces we've looked at the visualization um, one of the things that i mentioned when talking about really going on that that journey from just getting all your data into one place um, is really trying to pull out and use that data. Um, and that's where the tool sections is going to come in. Uh, this is where you can set up some of your custom analytics for the KPIs that you want to pull out of your uh, system. You know, this can be as simple as something as just looking at your available capacity in your plant. Um, and just doing your plant effluent flow, uh, you know, your capacity minus the plant effluent flow and looking at your, uh, your available capacity. So this is just looking at uh, using mathematical functions in order to pull out KPIs because once all your data is one place, being able to set up um, specific KPIs that you want to pull out of your system is kind of that next step to using that data where, where it does become a little bit more than just a visualization tool. And just a couple, uh, couple different examples of this where you set your data sources. So the data sources are going to be those sensor inputs. So using that sensors that are all within here and mathematical functions to pull out that information. The alerting capabilities is something that we've touched on here, uh, but just showing you how this looks, um, how this works, it's actually being able to use uh, greater than, you can use and statement or, or statements, look at physical sensors or those virtual sensors that you create in the form of tools and other information and being able to set values that you're expecting it to work in. As you can see for this one, we're looking at turbidity. Uh, so setting a baseline and if it gets greater than that baseline, uh, that's going to send off an email alerting system. So letting you know that something might be going on that needs a little bit more attention. And then um, finally, the, the last part that I, I was really planning on diving in, touching on in uh, within the software, I think we'll have plenty of time for uh, questions as people have them, is being able to set up uh, these reports. And what these reports allow you to do is create upload uh, CSV reports and then be able to populate them uh, using your SCADA information. So using the data that you have within your plant. So whether you're looking at monthly chemical usage, uh, weekly chemical usage, you have the ability to choose a time range or a time offset in days from the current period. And so pulling in a month worth of data into a, a CSV format that will be populated using your data from that time period. Um, just trying to make that reporting to, uh, to be quicker, more efficient, 
being able to use your data when it's all in one place. I think uh, these sort of reporting, as well as just having all of the data in one place or looking at the different alerts, even something like that. If you are trying to uh, train someone and get them up to speed on uh, your plant and what's going on using that data, um, you can you can do that information using, um, and as you can see, it will, will auto-populate using um, the information that's actually within your plant actually um, occurred is a way that you could help someone get up to speed on what is going on uh, within your plant. And so that, Ryan, was mainly what I was planning to cover. Is there anything that you, you think I missed? Oh, I think he had to drop yeah, off for a second. I think we're, we're good. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the whole point to this was just to give everyone kind of a brief overview of things. Um, I don't think we anticipated on necessarily taking the full hour, but um, yeah, uh, we'll give everyone uh, about 20 more minutes to their uh, to their day. Uh, thanks, John, for the Go Tigers. <laughs> um, I would say Go Hokies, but it's not even, not even worth talking about during uh, football season. Oh, <laughs> Brian, we haven't even talked about uh, NC State beating Virginia Tech on Thursday that was oh oh yeah yeah they squeezed it out um anyway okay we we do have a serious question coming in <laughs> what does this tool replace how are utilities currently gathering this data and what improvement does this application bring to daily life um yeah great great question I mean I think the whole idea is just to um make the data more accessible um I mean it, it varies of different utilities that they're, um, you know, I've, I've heard of some that will don't have any insight to their SCADA data, that they're literally taking screenshots of their their um, of their SCADA dashboard and, and sending that as a way of being able to um, send data back and forth. Um, I don't know that there's a specific tool that it's necessarily designed to replace, uh, but just to be able to aggregate information a little bit better, uh, put together those reports. Uh, like I mentioned, I've, I've I put together some of those uh, those um, DMR reports and things like that, and just the interactions between different spreadsheets is, is you know very complicated and cumbersome. Um, usually taking a couple hours to to really get everything put together, rather than uh, like Hunter was showing, just kind of putting together things on the fly. Uh, anything to add there, Hunter? Yeah, and, and really, it's you know with bringing it all together, it's it's really trying to help with the manual process of either uploading data or gathering data, you know, uh, sometimes the SCADA team and then the operators that are working within the plan are, are on different sides of an organization are working with different people. So it takes a lot of time if they were looking to pull out this information or see the trends that have been going on. Um, so I think just really trying to improve that access to data, get rid of the really manual process of um, being able to access that data and then being able to get more people to have eyes on it, have access on it. And then on touching on that, there is um, tiered access. So you can grant people, you know, some people just need to view what's going on in the system and not manipulate, not create tools. Um, so it's really just a way to increase uh, the number of people that have access that, to the data, which intrinsically makes it more usable. Yeah, so we've got a couple of questions now that are kind of on the same um, kind of vein there. Uh, but one, one about training for operators and plant managers to customize things. And then also um, just speaking about the implementation, uh, you know, being able to configure everything. And um, I guess the answer to both those questions really is, is yes. Um, we don't uh, have anything that's you know, necessarily out of the box or anything like that, but our uh, support services, our implementation teams can uh, certainly build these things for our customers. I know we have some engineering firms interested in uh, being able to basically do the same thing as an engineering service. Um, so we definitely have resources to be able to um, help uh, utilities build these dashboards out, build them out to be uh, what they envision them to be. Um, anything to add to that, Hunter? Um, 
No, I think I think you really well covered it. Um, kind of speaking on the training and then the implementation, we do have um, different levels. So the only thing I would really add is you can really get as much uh, hand holding or as much up, you know, customization. Some people just want, hey, can you just help us with the basics? Create a couple of workspaces and we're off. And then some people want uh, to be able to. Uh, be able to get more set up in the beginning and more um, more implemented with it. Um, so I think I think the unfortunately the general answer is it just kind of varies. Um, yeah. But it, but it is the once you know it's set up and you're getting in there, it's it's you know a, a pretty intuitive software to pick up. So creating those workspaces, yeah, in the beginning it might take a little bit longer, um, but as you go and progress, being able to set these up quicker and easier. Um, definitely. Yeah, definitely. We got uh, another question about um, uh, built in algorithms for improving processes, uh, like activated sludge. So um, that's where we're going to get into more of the AI and predictive analytics side of things. Um, we didn't really uh, touch on it a whole lot now. But um, I guess years ago now, we uh, Innovise did purchase an AI uh, company for optimizing wastewater and treatment processes. And uh, really the whole idea with Info360 Plant was uh, we realized that folks need more of a stepping stone sometimes where just bringing in the information and viewing everything is, is uh, valuable to these people. Um, and then eventually building in that, those AI uh, and machine learning, things like that. Um, I mean, there could be other things that get incorporated like genetic algorithms uh to be able to do some of those same things i i'd argue machine learning and ai is a little more um next level just because uh it's it's truly learning from the good and the bad versus a genetic algorithm that really just learns from the the good um so yeah definitely um getting there with that Yeah, and the only thing I'll add is uh, you kind of touched on it with a stepping stone, but definitely see this as a pathway to getting there. Um, you know, before you can dive into the AI and machine learning component, you need to know what you have um, and being able to pull all those data sources into one area uh, to be able to to take that next step. I think I think it's you know definitely a, a journey to get there, and I think this is this is one of the first steps.